Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Normally we talk about individual assets and we review them in terms of the evolution of the trade, which reviews and studies price and time cycles and energy. But today I want to focus on the stock market, a stock market that never seems to want to correct. You know, growing number of bullish calls out there calling for significantly higher prices. Uh, I want to examine whether or not that particular argument is even viable or uh, it's completely emotional based. Uh, norm here's the uh, stock sectors from the Dow Industrials. You can study them in the matrix. You can pull down your own matrix. You can follow along here. We can study them in terms of the weekly, daily, monthly trends, place them in the evolution of the trade, but I want to focus on the stock models here, which is a little lower. The stock models or timing models, this whole section right in here. Stock models are, are constituted of the sentiment model and the VIX model. And the combination of the two trade, create bullish trends or bearish trends. They both uh, agreed up, which means the oscillators both turn positive here and here on 10, 8 uh, of 20. So they've been in agreement for several months and price has really picked up the pace as they have agreed, uh, entered um, agreement in their phase. When they fall out of phase, maybe the sentiment model goes bearish or the VIX model goes bearish while the sentiment model is bullish. They enter consolidation and, and the only other thing they can do is enter a bear phase. So right now you can ride the market up because the two timing models are in bull phase. But this is not a free pass. As we travel lower in a section of the matrix, we can you take a look at the long-term cycles. And I've written a lot about the dividend yield cycle. Dividend yield studies price movements relative to dividend payouts. It's kind of like a combination of technical factors as well as fundamentals fundamentals be dividends, which are far more stable than earnings. And we break cycles down to C1, 2, 3, and 4. These are the shorter term ones, these are the longer term ones. And then you get a mean, which is the average of all four of them. And you can see that today's run in December generates a highlighted box here, which is a warning that today's minimum reading or today's reading of 2.2 for mean minus 2.22 is the lowest reading in the history of the matrix, which is a problem. Um, it's telling us that either we're in rarefied air in terms of all data that goes back into the 1800s, or this is some type of anomaly that the market will ignore. And in it, it, I wouldn't ignore it. It's possible that the market could go into a cycle inversion and push this mean even higher. But that we are, you know, you can't be 100% certain about that yet either. So let's examine these dividend cycles a little bit further here and see what kind of headwinds we're facing. So this chart studies the uh, dividend cycle means for one through four um, during the uh, th the time period back into the 1800s. I think this goes back into 18, I have data going back to 1825. It starts about 1850 here. And the computer is looking at the bare points, the extreme readings of one standard deviation, it's highlighting quite a lot because one standard deviation is not statistically significant. It's extreme, but it's not over the top. One, 1.61 it means that all today's impulse is greater than 90% of the previous, and you can see that narrows the boxes down, and you can start to see where the major valuation points start to show up in the matrix. It doesn't always mark, in a, uh, mark a crash or a transition point, but it often does mark a period of which stocks are become vulnerable, but they can continue up or they can crash in 1929, 1987, 98. Uh, 1987, uh, 1972, 1899, they all mark periods of which then the stock market struggles to continue to trade higher. When we extend this to two, you can see the rarefied air that we've, we're approaching 
2020 is comparable to 1997, 98, of which then the market kept going, but then it basically went into a crash afterwards uh, so that it couldn't get out of for almost 10 years. Uh, it's comparable to the run-up in 87. It's comparable to the extreme valuations that we pushed in 1955, which slowed the market down, but it did keep on going. Uh, 1929, market crashed. Uh, 1899, which basically marked the a period within the Long Depression before we had the Great Depression. There was the Long Depression, of which it was difficult for the market to gain any steam and it got stuck in a long trading range for a long period of time because of these extreme readings that we faced. And there's nothing that's really above three standard deviations, but you can, if you include the five and six, which are long-term cycles, you can see how really truly extended this market is becoming. Um, this is one through six, so it includes the five, six, which are, again, long-term cycles. And if you push out to everything but this is this is nearly two standard deviations this marks the top in 2020 this marks the top in 2020 1929 or or 2000 top and 1929 it skips past the 87 setup but we're not that far i mean the current mean of this one through six cycles is minus one seven nine it, uh, and it, it would need to continue to drop lower but not that much further that's why i said the stock market could continue to rally but it's unlikely to go for more than two two more years before it's going to back up against a wall that it can't pass there was only two of these readings so far each of them marked a major transition point of which the market then struggled for at least 10 years and in some cases a couple decades and we're bumping against that wall so subscribers should be watching the long-term dividend cycles, the one through four in the matrix, and we should keep an eye on the five, six, and when this dips below, which would likely happen within a year or two, it depends on how far the market rallies and how dividend payouts respond to that. If they remain sluggish and don't keep up, it won't be long before the market reaches the 2000 and 1929 extremes and then if you are thinking and under the uh, belief that the stock market will rally infinitely and it's uh, off to the races there's no way that's going to happen without a complete confidence break maybe the currency collapses and then the stock market basically becomes a hedge private assets become a hedge against that currency collapse but that would be the only thing and it wouldn't be real gains much of that would be currency devaluation. So th th this is a real warning sign for the start of a new, you know, multi-year secular bull market. It's likely we could see a rally into 2022. Really depends on how dividends respond. And dividends will be given out soon here because we're getting first quarter earnings. So we're going to see how they respond. If it's a poor response, the, the dividend yield cycles will pick up, up first. So that's that's really the argument against or the setup within the stock market. It's not argument against. It's just the reality that the stock market faces a lot of headwinds, and we must frame our analysis within that. So subscribers, keep a close eye to this. We'll talk about this further. If you have any questions on the timing models, contact me through the blog, Twitter, or subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, put your comments down below, and I'll get back to you. Well, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll, until next time, have a good day.